I'm getting started with my fabric work. I've got the door over there, the lower door half. I started with it. Figured it was the easiest one to do because it doesn't have any complex curves or anything in it. It's uh, fairly straightforward, although it does have some pretty good angles. I started up uh, putting the fabric on the inside. Now this is the outside of the air airframe here. The, the seams on it won't be exposed on the outside of the airframe. And I'm glad I started on it first because uh, it's been a while since I've done this and it's uh, not like exactly like jumping on a horse and jumping on a bicycle and going for a ride again. Uh, probably is if you've done it a lot, but I hadn't done it much prior to that. So that's what we started with and we've got a good start on that. I've got my stuff laid out here, kind of inventory it to see what I've got, to make sure I've got everything I need. And of course the first thing you need is the polyfiber book. This is a little free book and it comes in a kit. Years ago when I first started flying the fabric airplanes I bought uh, two little kits actually uh, and they come with this in it and they come with uh, some fabric in it and um, the, the things you need to do a practice kit. They have a framework you can put together to uh, glue the fabric to, to practice and do all the stuff with it comes with all of the, the uh, dope uh, glues, uh, liquids and stuff like that that go with it. I think it comes with a needle and uh, a few other things. It's enough for a practice kit, everything in there you need to start out. What it does is though, for me, what I got it for was for a kit to carry with me for repairs. It's just the right size. It's got everything in it. Uh, it's just the right size to pack and uh, in for doing repairs out in the field or something like that, small repairs on fabric, it's just about right. This is what we've got going here. I've got these uh, Florian pinking shears. They work really good. I got uh, new ones of those. I've got two pair of them in case one gets dull. I, I went to uh, Joanne Fabrics and they had these uh, Fiskers uh, scissors on sale in a package and I got a package of those with three in it uh, this size a smaller size and then a mini size this is some um, heat sink dielectric compound and it's used on computers and things like that when uh, for the heat sink on the big transistors the big uh, IC chips and stuff in there that have to be cooled and that's what you use to uh, calibrate these irons I've got this iron that we used previously and I just recalibrated it or just calibrated it and I've got this little cover it iron that was given to me by a friend and uh, I just calibrated it and I've got a new iron here that we got at Costco the other day I thought it would be nice for doing this with because it has a slip bottom and stuff what happens on these is you use them the uh, the vinyl, the glue, the stuff you use on there on the fabric gets stuck on the bottom here and you get to wipe it off and eventually it gets rough and, and they don't work very well. So anyway I bought this brand new iron figuring I'd use it and it would be nice to use and I'm trying to calibrate it. The problem is it doesn't have a dial on it. Everything is uh, automatic and it's got different settings on it for synthetic silk, wool, cotton and all of that. It's also got sensors in there if you don't move the thing around every 15 seconds when you put it down then it automatically shuts itself off so it's a pain in the butt to lay down on here and try to calibrate it and you can't adjust it uh, intermittently like this one well, there it goes see it shut itself off again sitting there and it won't come up temperature so this one has a rotary dial on it and even though it's not very accurate, not very good. It, it's still, you can turn it on and off and adjust the dial. And so I've got it calibrated around there for the different temperatures that I need. I got 100 pack of razors, even though we already had some in here. Uh, I've got some good brushes. Problem is, I'm trying to do this. Uh, I've used my narrowest brush and it's too wide for what I'm doing right now on that uh, thing. So we've got some inspection rings here. I've got more than enough of those. These uh, get glued onto the fabric and then covered over with a doily. And this is where you cut out inside there and put a cover on it. And then you got to reach through those to do your inspections and stuff in places you need to get to on the airplane. 
I've got uh, grommets. Uh, you don't necessarily need grommets on the airplane. You can just put, put holes in it uh, for a drain. But this is a seaplane, so we've got seaplane grommets, and they've got a little cup in them. And uh, hopefully that will cause a little venturi effect as the air goes over these. They line up with in the slipstream so that the slipstream goes this way. And as the air goes over those, hopefully they'll cause a little suction, a little venturi, and help pull out any moisture that's inside the fuselage or inside the horizontal stabilizer or whatever it's on. These are some gussets that go on um, over the cable outlets where the rudder, rudder cables penetrate the side of the fuselage. There's some vinyl thick uh, gussets that go over that, some doublers. Here we've got thread. This is sewing machine thread. I got two spools of it because I didn't know what I was doing and it didn't take hardly any of it to do, but that's what you sew the fabric together with when you use a sewing machine and that's what you use to make the uh, envelope for the fuselage with. If you hand sew it, then there's a different fabric or a different thread that you have to use for hand sewing. Behind it is rib, rib stitch thread. That's the flat rib stitch thread. There's also a round rib stitch thread, and I have a spool of it somewhere and I can't find it. Um, here I've got a juice can, and that's got some poly tack in it, and then I've got a paint um, mixing cup and that's got MEK in it and my uh, paint brushes and we got the different types of tape you got four inch tape, three inch tape, two inch tape uh, one inch tape, I think I've got one and a half inch tape someplace and then some two inch bias tape I'll probably use a four inch tape on the fuselage on the lower longerons and stuff on that and then this big roll over here is uh, anti-chafe tape that goes on in places where there's rough spots on the fuselage or on the area you're covering it goes on under the cover to protect the fabric from uh, chafing through getting cut through for any protrusions and the only thing that I've got that I need that for and what I bought it for is for the the tail uh, strakes as part of the vortex generator kit now those uh, had masking tape on it and that all absorbed moisture and swelled up great big and was nasty and, and uh, it caused those their, their steel the brackets for that uh, uh, tail straker made out of steel and and they were pretty rusty so I've got regular anti-chafing tape on there for that that's self-adhesive anyway I got way more of that than I need but you had to buy it by the roll and not not by the yard or whatever uh, the large roll there of the smaller stuff is the reinforcing tape. This goes on over the ribs before you rib stitch. Uh, then when you stitch, then the, then the uh, thread goes over the top of that, and then that gets covered over with the seam tape. And I've got another roll of that. I've got more than enough of that because the only things that we rib stitch here on what I'm doing here is the horizontal stabilizers, the elevators, the rudder, and uh, the vertical fin and, uh, so I don't have to rib stitch wings or anything then under in the same uh, envelope or same baggie with that uh, anti-chafing tape there's some grommets there that go on in different inspection uh, covers for the airplane those go on in the tail back where the uh, elevator cables hook on one of the other things that we need I have are these little spring clamps there good for holding the fabric on in places until you get it glued down and stuff and I just bought these little packages spring clamps they got a couple different sizes in there bought those at Harbor Freight I didn't think these little ones were going to be big enough but they they work just fine for that and this was only a couple bucks for that whole thing I got two of those so well here is what comes in the kit when you buy the little practice kit of course you get this uh, cover uh, this book and then uh, get a little bottle of MEK, a little can of MEK which is kind of cute, a little can of reducer, this is 65 to 75 and there's different reducers, this is for temperature of 65 to 75 degrees if you're in a warmer area then you'd want one that goes up to a higher temperature um, Polytac, that's the first thing you use, that's the 
stuff you glue everything down with. You glue the fabric down to the uh, structure with it and you glue the um, like the grommets and stuff down to the fabric with this. And then you have poly brush. That's what you use to fill the weave of the fabric with and everything and then you use it to glue down the tapes and stuff like that. And you have poly spray. That's the final coating. Poly tack, poly brush, poly spray. They're all the same stuff. They're all a, a vinyl um, suspended in whatever um, solvent that they use for that. MEK is the universal solver for it, but they use different solvents in there for this. It's not quite as strong, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, these things are all three the same. Polytac is a little thicker. Uh, you can thin it with MEK. Polybrush, the difference in it and the Polytac is the Polybrush, of course, is a little thinner and you thin it down with the reducer when you use it, but it has a pink um, dye in it so that you can identify places that you've brushed it all on and so you don't miss anything and kind of kind of like the primer you use when you glue PVC pipe together it's tinted uh, blue or purple so that you can see the places that the joints have been made and that's this stuff is pink so you can see that it covers everything I guess you can get it clear for areas that you want to cover that you don't want the pink to show through say that you're not going to cover over with something else you're just going to leave the poly brush on it and then the poly spray again it's the same stuff uh, but it has powdered aluminum in it and the aluminum makes it a silver color and that reflects a UV light and that protects everything underneath it from the UV radiation keeps the sun from rotting it this is the main Bible polyfiber Bible at ten bucks and it's a good uh, it's got this has the same this has the same information in it as this does but this has more oh it's got the STC in it and it's got uh, a catalog in there of all the parts and then an explanation of how you mix different things and uh, uh, anyway it's got quite a bit more into it than that the other manual that you need is the AC uh, FAA Advisory Circular uh, 43.13 Now I've got a hard copy of that someplace well I don't know where it is I maybe I don't have it anymore I might have loaned it out to somebody but you can get this available online now through the FAA's website and you can always make sure you have the latest copies to of it with any revisions but that's basically the Bible for aircraft repair and inspection as it says um, that's pretty much the Bible the only thing that supersedes that is the uh, factory uh, aircraft manufacturers repair manuals and this give, lays out all the techniques and everything that you need for aircraft repair repair it's got everything in it uh, how to repair uh, fiberglass uh, plexiglass uh, electrical wiring and then the wire control cables and things like that welding steel aluminum rivet spacing types of rivets bolts nuts hardware virtually everything you need to know um, on repair techniques and stuff like that aircraft manufacturers information supersedes this but uh, on that Piper on the Super Cub there is no manufacturer's documentation for it so that uh, is what you gotta go by is this thing this is the fabric this is a piece of cut off fabric it's a polyester uh, fabric real thin weave and it's uh, heat shrinkable um, it reduces by six percent at uh, 250 degrees and um, 5 to 6 percent at 250 degrees and 10 to 12 percent at 350 degrees and that over 350 degrees they warn you not to go over because then it'll lose its uh, uh, shrink it'll it'll just start stretching and lose its ability to hold tautness according to the polyfiber book uh, this stuff is so slippery that nothing sticks to it so this polytack this uh, 
stuff that uh, is developed by Ray Stitz. It doesn't glue this down. It, this doesn't glue down like gluing paper to paper or paper to wood or anything like that. What happens is this stuff sticks to the metal, the wood, or whatever it's applied to. It sticks to it, but the way it bonds this to it is it fills the weave and actually comes through the weave to the other side and you want to form it uh, all the way through so like there's a little spot there that come through and so you want a little bit it's got to be bonded on both sides it's got to come through that weave and form on this side and so that's what you're doing here you spread a poly tack on these things and then put it down and uh, spread it out and push it in so that the poly tack comes up through the weave of the fabric that's what the poly brush does and you put it on in the open spaces here it goes on thick enough that it goes through the weave of the fabric and so it's on both sides of it there and it forms it just encapsulates the sandwiches the fabric in between it since it's all the same stuff it winds up all being a, a single monolithic structure I said it's been a while since I've done this and um, doing it on this is, is bringing it things back to me. Um, one of the things you want to use protection on your hands and uh, they recommend using vinyl gloves or nit uh, nitrile gloves, something like that, is this uh, solvents. Uh, especially the MEK is uh, organic solvent. It goes right through your skin, gets right into your blood system and goes right to the liver and can build up and cause liver damage as well as other organ damage. So you want protection of that, but when you use rubber gloves or the vinyl gloves, what happens is you're spreading this stuff out with your fingers and stuff. It all gets stuck to it, and of course the MEK and the solvents uh, loosen that up, and it winds up, the, the gloves get torn pretty rapidly. They don't last very long, but the real problem is, is it sticks to this stuff, so you wind up with little bits of, of vinyl, of rubber, stuff like that embedded in your um, fabric in different places so that's a pain in the butt that's uh, most of the guys that uh, showed me how to do it just did it barehanded and uh, quite a few of the people I've watched on videos do it barehanded but uh, I don't like that idea too much I've got this stuff here invisible gloves and I've uh, used it quite a bit uh, Oh, like it, yeah, working around on the truck on the engines and things like that that are greasy where you don't want to wear gloves or wear them out real fast. This stuff is uh, semi semi liquid, semi paste. It's cr cream. Uh, actually, when it was cold, it was even more um, creamier or more solid. But it just goes on. It's kind of nasty, but you put it on your hands and rub it all in smear it all around and it does a remarkably good job of protecting your hands from even chemicals uh, even most of the solvents and stuff that I've uh, used don't seem to penetrate it so using it on the pickup where around the grease and oil and stuff uh, it, it'll just oil and stuff will wash right, right off and doesn't get it embedded in all these little crevices and fingerprints and stuff like that in your finger around your fingernails here and stuff it does doesn't get embedded in there and this stuff just washes off with with soap and water problem with it is is it I probably got too much on this time but uh, I'll wipe that off a little bit but you put it on and it takes about five minutes or so for it to dry to where you can start touching things and then you can uh, put gloves on over the top of this stuff and uh, you got double protection it's like wearing two condoms I guess not that I ever tried that so I let this stuff set up while I, and now I can't touch the camera, I can't touch anything while this stuff is setting up. But now you need rags to clean up the excess uh, poly tack and poly stray and stuff like that to rub things down with. And of course you can use soak the rag in MEK and it uh, dissolves most of that stuff. And you want to use clean rags because uh, a lot of the rags, if you even the ones you make at home, but they've been laundered in dryer sheets used on them and stuff and the dryer sheets have silicone in them and that gets embedded into that cloth and you can't get it out and then it comes out and gets on your stuff that you're trying to coat and it'll it'll ruin a paint job 
So you need uh, virgin cloth or cloth that doesn't have any uh, any silicones in it. Well, I started out using these shop towels, um, just the paper shop towels, and they work okay. The problem is they start breaking down and uh, coming apart, and you get little fibers all over embedded and everything. So they're not working out as good as I had thought. So the best thing to do is to get some um, regular cloth rags, and as you use them, that MEK dissolves the polyfiber, polytac, whatever, on what as you're rubbing it, but it gets picked up in this weave here, so these um, cloths, they get, uh, so they're not usable after a while, short period of time, they just get saturated with the polytac and the polychemical. One of the problems with this uh, polytac seems to be the worst is that when it uh, gets warm or whatever the solvent loses in it and it dries out and, and then it's no good anymore. And that's what happened with the practice kits that I got when I went to open them up. The polytac was uh, all dried out in it and no good. Well you have to get fresh fresh stuff and living up here in Alaska where everything has to be mailed up here and you have to pay through the nose for hazmat anymore on top of the high price for shipping is really a nuisance. My door has got a good start of covering. I folded this first piece on the bottom uh, and it's glued on to the outside here. It's glued onto the bottom, glued onto this side, and then folded over on the inside and glued on there. And I'll do the same thing. All the rest of it is glued on on the outside and we'll glue this on the rest of the way. And then the top will fold over fold over this and then it has to be glued at least an inch uh, onto this other fabric on there. Oh, this is a non-structural piece so it's not too critical but uh, it still has to be overlapped an inch. Polyfiber manual here is pretty good for covering and I've got a, a DVD that Polyfiber put out and it's okay it's not not real great um, there's really not a whole lot online. It's almost like polyfiber would rather sell whatever they're charging for a DVD than to sell the product and let people know how to use their product. There's other stuff on YouTube. Superflight and several others have some pretty good videos on using their material. Uh, Above Alaska Aviation has some videos on there showing them covering the uh, Super Cubs that they build for that um, drawing for the Alaska Airmen's Association every year. Uh, they're uh, sped up quite a bit and they're more tuned to not showing you how to do it but more tuned to uh, shilling for selling the tickets for the drawing. Um, but if you slow the videos down to uh, 0.5 speed or even 0.25 speed you, they're actually not too bad. And then there's a gal on there that uh, called I Apply You Fly and she does a pretty good job of fabric covering but she doesn't it's not really a how-to on her either but again you can slow their videos down get a pretty good idea of, of how to do it but most of them the the uh, polyfiber book uh, and video tell you to apply the polyfiber to the um, backing material that you're gluing to and then just put the uh, fabric down and rub it till it comes through most of these other guys, they put it on a little bit there and then put it on the outside too with a brush. And then there's a, a good video that somebody put up uh, on of a demonstration at uh, Sun and Fun, I believe, where a gal is showing how to do the rib lacing. And uh, that one's pretty good. It's not EAA that does it or, or uh, Polyfiber that does it video. It's some guy that took the video um, while he was looking, while the gal was doing the, the rib stitch and showing how to do it. There's a series of videos at Spencer Aviation. Spencer Aviation is the outlet in the Pacific Northwest for the polyfiber. There's somebody took a video there of a class that they had, but it's chopped up so bad that you can't really get much out of it. Uh, it's short and chopped up and, and it's really hard to find. There's like four or five of them listed on the Spencer site, but there's a whole bunch more of them than that. It would have been good if it had been semi-continuous and you could access all of the videos, but you have to really hunt to find them.